what on earth are we talking about? Uh, you know, all this work with animals. Imagine a, a sort of, uh, you know, a psychologist who has no interest in spirituality or the sort of, and, and you know, comes into this workshop. And thinks, what are you guys talking about? You know, um, pictures of animals on cards and so on. Um, here's one way of understanding it, which is that um, there are inner animals. There are, when you connect with an animal, um, like you were both talking about your t sense of its totem animal, the, the sense of familiarity, um, this idea of the familiar that comes out of, uh, you know, folk tradition, is, is th th there's a way in which an animal can be simply a representation of a feeling that you have. So, for instance, if I feel particularly hurt, I might connect to an image of a wounded, a wounded animal, a little bird that's, that's been hurt. And there's all sorts of wonderful work you can do with self-healing around that. If you ever feel wounded and hurt, just go into your grove or go into your imagination and just ask for an animal to, that symbolizes this hurt feeling to come to you. And, you, you know, and maybe put out your hands or extend your love towards this. And you might find that there's a little wounded bird in your, in your cupped hands. Or on Tea with a Druid the other day, I suggested that a little deer, a hind, a sort of Bambi creature came in who was slightly wounded and that we all held it and gave it our love. And just give the creature, imagine you're healing the creature and that it's getting better. And just go with your feelings and, and this can bring you a sense of healing at a very deep level. So you could explain this whole work with animals simply at a psychological level, that they are symbolizations of of feelings. There's another psychological level you could talk about in terms of instincts that, you know, if I imagine a, a, a panther and then I imagine that I am a panther, then possibly I'd be able to connect with my instinctive feelings more uh, strongly. And Stephanie would be either terribly pleased as a result or terribly displeased depending on how she felt about panthers and whether she wanted me to be instinctive. What sort of animal would you get, <laughs> get, on, with get on with it? Um, and uh, so again, purely psychological, but with a spiritual perspective, we can go deeper. We can say, yes, okay, that's a reality. And there's a whole lot of work we can do about that, that maybe if we need to release feelings, we can bang a drum made of, you know, deer skin and, and, howl and let things out and all the rest of it. But we believe as well, and I think you probably do too, which is why you're here, is that animals exist in the other world, that there is this physical world, but it's not the only world. This is the world of appearances. It's real. Um, we love it. We're engaged with it. We're frightened by it too. It's huge. It's awesome. But there's also other levels of reality and that animals exist as spirits in this other level of reality. How do we access them? Well, one way we access them is with our imagination. So we, we imagine we're in the sacred grove. We do an exercise like the, 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 the ones that we've done where we, we sense an animal. Now, you remember I said, if you're not getting an animal, imagine you're getting one, pretend you're getting one, evoke one with your own creative mind, as it were. And it may, again, it may well be your imagination, but that doesn't matter because the way I look at it is that the animals of the imagination if you stay with them and really attune with them, they move from the world, the world of our personal uh, imagination, which is under the control of our conscious mind, blends into our unconscious. And you could still say, you could take a Freudian approach and say, well, that's your personal unconscious. But I believe you keep going with your personal unconscious. So a, a pig in my personal unconscious may mean something different to a pig in your personal unconscious. But, I'm, but it's there, it's appearing in my dreams, for instance. But if you keep going, if you, if you make voyages into the unconscious, hence the value of meditation, because you can go into this world that is normally inaccessible to you with everyday consciousness. You go deep, you go into your personal unconscious. And then I believe we reach the collective. We then become unions and we say, oh, we're in the collective unconscious. And so we're, we're experiencing the pig at the collective level getting messages, ideas, symbols, you know, having dreams and so on. 
And you can say, oh, yes, but that's just the collective. That's nothing more than some kind of collective feeling about, um, you know, at the moment, there may be a collective feeling about bats, for instance, and so on. But then you can, uh, we believe, or I believe certainly, that you go further and you get beyond the collective to the transpersonal, the spiritual, if you like. And that it's not just the sum total of everybody's unconscious mind in a great sort of soup out there. It's actually transpersonal. It's the mind of God, goddess. It's uh, the deeper reality. It's, the, you know, it's the, 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 that realm. And that they're there. They're out there. There's the real animal. So you've taken a journey from pretending, imagining, creating in your imagination. You've taken it. You've gone in through meditation. You've dropped down to deeper states where you can go into your semi-conscious and an unconscious world you've had experiences and you've gone further in a shamanic way you could say into the collective and then continued on into the transpersonal into the other world and then when you have those experiences you will know about it you may only have one dream in your life uh, i've only had you know a couple of dreams like that in my life of the animal world where they come in and it's so real and it's so other and they're bringing something in and it affects a change it it um you know it's kind of when there is all experience of you is has gone it's it's like i suppose it's too simplistic to say you, your ego doesn't exist but it's it's like it's it's other than you yeah yeah I think it's other. Yeah, exactly.